These moldy car floors, seats caked with debris, and crusty cup holders are in need of a proper clean. We ask detailers to share the filthiest cars they have ever worked on. They show us how a simple deep clean can transform even the most forgotten vehicles. To kick us off, we'll follow Elizabeth Renevere of MO3 Detailing. She shares how to make stained car interiors look brand new. My name is Elizabeth Renevere. I am the owner and operator of MO3 Detailing. Afterwards, I put on a pre-treatment and I let it sit for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then I agitate with a drill brush or a hard bristle brush. So for the floor mats, I like to hang them up and rinse them out really well because those can just be filled with sand and dirt. You know, all that really gets deep into the fibers and just vacuuming isn't enough. Next up, Brent DeCesa from WD Detailing cleans the smelliest car he has ever worked on. My name is Brent DeCesa, I'm one half of WD Detailing, and today we're going to be cleaning an extremely dirty car that used to belong to a hoarder who's now in treatment. When we first got this car, we actually had to leave it outside of our shop for over a week just to let it air out because it was one of the worst smelling vehicles that we've ever been brought only because there was so much grime and grease in both the carpets and the seats, and there was just a ton of garbage everywhere. The first thing we did was use the ozone machine. The ozone machine removes air pollutants and odors while also killing bacteria and viruses inside the car, which makes it a lot safer for us to work in there. After taking the seats out, the first thing that we do is take all the trash out and completely vacuum the car. That way we can really see what we're working with. So when you see a car in this condition, it doesn't always make too much sense to save it. But this car was brought to us by a really, really nice gentleman named Parker. He reached out to us and told us that he wanted to clean the car and give it away to someone who really needed it. That really touched us, so we were instantly in. 
as we were vacuuming, we found a pile of dead bugs that were just sitting on the carpet right next to the back seat. And it was mixed in with some hair and just some of the goodies when, when you're detailing disaster cars. When people leave food or anything of that sort that starts breaking down, that's when the maggots start appearing in their cars. They vacuum up pretty easily, as long as they don't splatter all over the carpet, but even then you can just extract them. This garbage was so stuck on, we literally could not get it off with our hands. Even a power washer isn't good enough to get it off. So we'll use a flathead screwdriver occasionally. It helps get stuff off of the surface that we otherwise wouldn't be able to. It actually wasn't sticky or oily. It was kind of like a rough feeling, like Velcro. It's almost like that rough feeling. That's how, how bad this carpet was. If we didn't pull the carpet out of this car, there was no possible way we were gonna get it completely clean, especially with all the stains on it. You would normally wanna replace this carpet, but we were trying to keep the budget as low as possible as per Parker, that's what he wanted to do. So the original color of this car's carpets, floor mats, seats was a gray, and when we got it, they were almost black. The stains in the carpet came from, I don't even know, honestly. We were just assuming that it's like grease and dirt and everything mixed together. We have this carpet brush that will get any hairs out of the carpet because this carpet also had what seemed like dog hair in it as well. And we got all of that out with a vacuum and our brush. We used a degreaser instead of an extractor soap, only because degreaser is a bit stronger. And then we went ahead and drill brushed it in to start getting it to work into the fibers of the carpet. We ended up having to power wash and extract this carpet four times. After you spend 20 minutes on the same stain or half an hour and you keep working at it and you can tell that it's not changing color, it's not coming out anymore, and there's really not that much more you can do. You know as a detailer, it's kind of time to just call it. I would say 85% of the stains and the dirt were out of the carpet, and about 15% that was just complete damage was never gonna come out. We hung it up inside of a closet where there's a heater. So we actually had to let it dry for two days. So dyeing the carpet was actually a last minute decision that I ended up making myself. The first step is to spray dye on the carpet. We use a brush to brush it into the carpet to make sure it doesn't just sit because if it sits, then the carpet will become like hard, bristly texture. And then you'll go back and you'll spray over it again. And then you just let it sit and dry. And that's really it. The only things you want to be careful about are inhaling the fumes. So we wore our respirators and because we're in a parking garage, we have a really big exhaust fan right next to us. And we had that running the entire time. And we don't do this on normal carpets or uh, honestly ever. But when we saw that some of the stains weren't coming out, we wanted to make sure that this is gonna really change someone's life and they're gonna be happy when they receive it. Embedded in the seats are grease and there was so much of it after we did the entire extraction the first time, we let it dry overnight and we came back the next day and it was completely covered in grease again. So everything that was farther in the seat came to the surface. So we had to clean them a second time. So after we spray our extractor soap, we'll let the soap sit for about a minute or two, and then we'll go ahead and use the drill brush to agitate the soap into the fibers, and then we'll clean it out with the extractor. The extractor has a little nozzle that sprays hot water into the fibers of the seat, and then it also has a vacuum head. So as it's spraying the water into it, it's sucking the water out at the same time. That way it can clean it we have a clear head on it so we can actually see all of the soap, all of the dirt coming out of the seat. And when that water coming through is completely clear, that's how you know when the seat is clean. 
So now we're cleaning the back seat of the car, which was also one of the grossest parts of the car. And the first thing we did was use the Tornador to spray off any of the dirt. And that is simply just an air compressor tool that shoots out air in a tornado formation. And that'll get a lot of the dirt out of the deeper fibers of the seat. And then after that, we'll go on to the extracting process. The Tornador is best for getting any kind of microparticles out of the carpet or out of the seats and then dust or dirt or anything that's on like the topical layer as well. So at this point we're taking apart the center console so we can get it out of the car and pressure wash all of the disgusting grease and mold and everything off of it. Dirt definitely gets behind both the radio or any of the knobs on the center console because that's where your hands are touching a lot. So by disassembling those things and cleaning behind them, we know that we're sanitizing and doing the best job that we possibly can. Sometimes the Tornador can't get things that are super stuck on if they're gooey or anything like that, almost like a glue substance to plastics. The air is not gonna do a good enough job, so you have to scrape it off and power wash it. We wanted to give it a good exterior cleaning too. It did have a thick layer of dust on the exterior. The engine bay was dirty. The wheels had brake dust all over them. Surprisingly enough, Dirt or dust actually acts as a protectant to paint. So when a car is dusty or covered in a layer of dirt, it protects it from the sun's UV rays. So the first thing that we do is we spray our degreaser all over the paint because it's paint safe. And that'll just start loosening up any of the dirt on the outside. And then we'll use our power washer to get the dirt off. So after we wash the car, we go ahead and we spray the entire thing down with a ceramic sealant while it's still wet. And that just gives it a little bit of protection and also a shine after we wash it. And then we'll go ahead and spray it down again before drying it. After we were done with it, he actually needed to take it back to his home shop and do some mechanical work on it to make sure it's safe for the people whoever owns it next. We were really happy with the result of this car, but what meant the most to us is how Parker reacted because this was something special to him and the fact that we got to be a part of it is why we did it in the first place. We do all these details absolutely for free. So we took this on because we wanted to make a change and we wanted to help a family that needed it. For this car, Brent tackles months of mold growth caused by water damage. My name is Brent DeCheser and I'm half of WD Detailing and today we're going to be cleaning a super moldy car that has grass growing in it, mold, water and all of the above. It was absolutely disgusting. First, we put the ozone machine inside the car. It basically pumps oxygen to the third degree into it, or ozone, and it suffocates the bacteria and kills it. And then we'll pull the seats out after we do the ozone treatment. So we can actually get to all the, the spots that we need to. And then the first thing that we'll do is vacuum it, try to get all the debris, or in this case, the mold and the water out of it, so we can really get in the car and work on it. So here we're working with where all of the water ended up going. The water was only on half of the car, and I think that's because of where the leak was located. So what you're looking at right now is us vacuuming up all of that water. 
The last time that this car was plated was in 2015, so it ended up sitting for the last six years, and just about five months ago, the owner noticed that there was an issue with the sunroof where it wouldn't close all the way, and water was continuously getting in there, but we've never seen anything like this before. For a car like this, it's actually recommended to remove the carpet, throw it away, and replace it. But for some reason in this specific car, it was stapled down completely to the point where if we were going to remove it, it wasn't going to go back in and sit the way that it would need to. For this car, it was definitely a different process than when we would normally extract a car because the carpet was basically stained with that green mold and we had to try to figure out a way to push it out of the fibers of the carpet and see if the carpet would revive to the white color that it ended up being. So the first thing that we did, which we normally would not do, is use the Tornador attachment, which is compressed air that shoots out in a circle, like a tornado almost. You have like a little compartment where you put all-purpose cleaner in mixed with water, so you dilute it, and you attach it to an air hose on an air compressor, and it really gets into the fibers of that cloth and kind of blows out anything that might be in there. So we blew out the entire carpet with it after vacuuming it, and then we'll go ahead and we'll use our extractor soap on it and spray like a healthy amount on there. And we'll actually use the extractor, which shoots hot water into the carpet to get the carpet a little bit more wet because when we use our drill brush, we wanna to try to reduce the amount of friction that we're putting into the carpet because if there's too much friction, if it's not wet enough, then it can actually damage the carpet. We'll use our drill brush to agitate all of that soap so we'll go over it a few times, get it really into the fibers, and then we'll use our hot water extractor, which only has water in it. We don't ever recommend putting any kind of soaps or anything in your extractor because when you're blowing the water into the carpet, you wanna suck everything out, and if you have soap in it, it's just gonna add more to it, and it's not gonna be completely clean. I actually filled half of, of shop back full of water so I think I actually got probably 95% to 99% of the water out. When you do the doors, it's the same thing as doing any of the other plastics in the car. In this case, we use TriClean, which is made to kill bacteria and all that stuff inside of cars. While most all-purpose cleaners do kill bacteria, we wanted something that is a little bit stronger, especially because in this case, there's a lot more mold than you would normally see in a regular car and then use the Tornador attachment or some soft bristle brushes and really get in every nook and cranny and make sure we clean it out. So for this part, he's actually drying off the door and getting all the liquid out of the nooks and crannies. So that is the Tornador attachment, but that's a different one than the one that is used for specifically cleaning. So this Tornador attachment doesn't have the canister that holds any kind of cleaner and this one just blows out air. So you use that to get into cracks and crevices where you normally couldn't with a brush or with a microfiber towel, or you use it to get under seats. When we do leather seats that have been sitting in mold, the first thing we do with any seat is vacuum it just to get any kind of debris, especially in the crevice where the bottom and the back of the seat meet. We'll use an all-purpose cleaner or a leather cleaner. They're two different things. A leather cleaner is more suitable for high-end leather. And then he'll spray it on there, use a color lock brush. So it's like a really fine, strong brush to get into all of the pores of the seat. When we're cleaning leather seats, we don't use too much pressure just because you don't want to damage them. You could leave scratches, you could tear them. Spray it again, use the steamer to kill any bacteria and then wipe that away too. When we do the wheels, the first thing we like to do is pressure wash them off and get any of that initial dirt or grime off of them. We have some heavy acid that we'll use if it's really bad, but we don't use it on painted rims. And then we'll go ahead and we'll agitate it with a brush and we'll use a few different brushes to really get in both the wheel well, on the tire, inside the rim, in the drum of the rim. And then we'll go ahead and pressure wash it away. So for the exterior, because it had been sitting out for so long, over time, if you don't clean it, grime will get attached to the paint and start growing mold. Because we did the exterior of the car first, we weren't too worried about water getting in since it was already full of water. 
So we just went ahead and we pressure washed everything out. We put paint safe degreaser all over the paint because it just had a really thick layer of both mold and grime on it that wouldn't just come off with an initial pressure wash. We let it sit for about two to three minutes and then we pressure washed it again. And then we'll go ahead and we'll use the foam cannon. So the foam is just a car soap and you just put it into a foam cannon and you attach it to your pressure washer. It acts as a lubricant for any dirt that's on the car. So when you go to wash it, you're really minimizing how much scratching can happen to the paint. And then we'll go ahead and we'll use our microfiber mitts to wash it and then spray it off. The absolute best way to store a car if it's going to be outside is with some sort of car cover or a tarp. That way, no water is going to get on the top of the car and find its way into the car. It'll keep the paint clean and away from all the elements. If it's going to be a car that you're not driving for extended periods of time, you still want to look in it and make sure nothing's going wrong because seals can give, and if they do and water starts getting in, then that's a whole world of problems. So the best way to stop mold is to be proactive and check on your car before it actually starts growing. When it comes to detailing, I believe it's best to maybe get a full detail once to twice a year, maybe three times. I always tell people to vacuum it, if not every few weeks, at least once a month. RJ Wagner from WD Detailing now attempts to revive this unusually muddy car. I'm RJ, I'm one half of WD Detailing, and today we're going to be showing you how we clean quite possibly the muddiest WS6 Firebird ever. It was involved in a really bad flood in Kentucky. The car was absolutely covered, basically head to toe in caked on mud to the point to where the mud had dried and it was starting to crack, almost like a desert floor. Rock hard. I can only assume that it was involved in very fast moving water. It picked up sediment from somewhere nearby and then it dried out. So the first step is removing pretty much anything except for the dashboard and the steering wheel and the steering column because that was a little bit more involved than we really had time for. We're using the vacuum to remove any residual water in the back of the trunk. Going into the detail, I knew a lot of this vehicle was going to be sold for parts because there was only X amount made and only a certain amount of parts available. It wouldn't make sense to scrap that car, especially with so many parts still being functional. It changed some of the ways that we were going to be cleaning the vehicle and using some methods that we wouldn't use in a normal detail. And we've never done this before, but we literally took a pressure washer and sprayed out the whole interior of the vehicle in order to remove all the mud. So the reason why we wouldn't do that in a normal detail job is it would definitely damage some of the electrical components of the vehicle if you didn't give the car ample time to dry. So if this was a normal vehicle that we did that in, we would have to disconnect the battery and then make sure that it dried out for over five or six days. With a car in this condition, to clean the carpet was, again, different than most vehicles that we see on a daily basis. So we probably spent about 45 minutes just pressure washing gallons of water into the carpet in order to try and flush as much mud out of it as possible. Well, not only that, we had to flip it over and spray out mud on the other side. And then we actually had to let it drain overnight to try and dry out as much as we could before we put it back in the next day to then continue to clean it inside the car. So once the carpet is dry, we then place it back into the vehicle and we use carpet soap. You spray it onto the carpet and then I actually use the extractor to add more water in order to create a soapier solution. And then you agitate it using a brush that connects to a drill to release some of the dirt and grime or the stains that are contained within the carpet fibers, bring them to the top so then you can suck it away with the extractor. In the extractor, we only use water. If you spray the soap onto the carpet and if you only have water in your extractor, when you see through the head of the extractor that there's no more foam, there's no more bubbles or soap that's coming out of the carpet, you know you've not only removed the contaminants that were in the carpet, but also any residue from a leftover soap. When we were cleaning the leather, we had to pressure wash the majority of the mud away first in order to even reveal the leather to follow a normal type of detailing method. There was too much mud on the surface to really remove it in any other way. So that's not typically how we would clean leather seats, but drastic cases call for drastic measures. 
And we then used an all-purpose cleaner in a tornador. It's basically compressed air that feeds into a reservoir that holds an all-purpose cleaner. And then it uses that compressed air to pick up the solution and blast it into the material that you're trying to clean. We'll use it when we know that the leather has seen a lot of age and we don't want to potentially damage it further. And then I went ahead and used a leather brush in order to agitate that further and to remove as much mud and sediment as possible. These would have to dry for another couple days in a heated storage facility. With the exterior, we went ahead and just did a pretty basic wash. So we had to make sure that we just blew out all the mud from all the cracks and crevices there. The foam cannon is my personal favorite part when it comes to washing the exterior of a vehicle. Foam and soap is the same thing. It's actually like shaving cream. You spray it onto your hand and as you lather it up, it becomes more foamy. It helps break down some of the grime, the grease, the sediment on the vehicle, and then lifts it to the top. And that way, as you're washing, there's both lubrication as well as cleaning properties that help you to remove the dirt and grime as efficiently and safely as possible. Cleaning the windows, most people ask what solution you're using, what window cleaner are you using, but in reality, it's the, the type of towel that you use and how many towels you use and how clean they are. So windows are very prone to streaking, especially when they've been splattered with mud like they were in this vehicle. So to start out, we just use your standard shop towels in order to remove the bulk of the grime. And then we use another type of towel that's called GSM. So it has a higher grams per square meter of microfiber. And all that means is that there's more fibers on the towel. And the more grams per square meter, the fluffier the towel, and the more microfiber strands there are to wipe away any of the streaks. they actually were able to get that car running again. So it still functions, but with a good conscience, they can't sell that car to another owner. When you finish it and you look back at the result, you know, we, we laugh because it's, it's almost like, I don't know how this, I don't know how it came out so well, but somehow it does. This abandoned car has layers of debris after sitting in a barn for 37 years. My name is Brent DeChezer. I'm one half of WD Detailing, and today we're going to be cleaning a 1978 Sterling Nova that sat in a barn since 1985. So a Sterling Nova is a kit car, which is on a Volkswagen Beetle chassis and engine. And it's really unique because of the way it looks and the way that the top opens. There's no doors on this car. The way that you get in and out is literally by the whole top lifting up. We had to take the top off of this car because it actually couldn't hold its own weight up and we didn't want to risk it falling on one of us. As soon as we took the top off of the car, we found this mouse nest right on the back side of the dash. It was made out of insulation or carpet or parts from the seats. Any random fibers that they can find in the car, they'll take and make a nest out of. And then we sanitize the area afterwards with TriClean, which is a cleaner that will kill all the bacteria. Cars attract mice because they know that it's a dark space and when these cars sit in a barn and nobody's touching them for 30 plus, 40 plus years, they're not gonna be bothered. So they're gonna take advantage of that. And then after that, we were able to take the seats out and really get in there and clean everything. We found that these carpets were completely disintegrated and they're definitely gonna have to replace them. And we actually haven't really seen carpets this bad before. So if I had to make an assumption on why this happened, it's a combination of them sitting over time and the mice getting into them and eating them up. And under the carpet, as soon as we pulled it out, I looked down and found a nice surprise of a dead mouse. We disposed of it off camera, but we just had to pick it up with our gloves and toss it in the garbage can. There's no nice way to throw away a dead mouse. We started vacuuming the floor pans and then we sanitized them again with our TriClean. clean 
and then we used our steamer behind it to kill anything else. And then we wiped it all away with microfiber towels. So this dashboard was covered in dust completely. And at this point, we're still using TriClean to clean the interior because we want to disinfect everything. We knew that this car isn't going to be started for quite a while because it doesn't run and it needs a lot of repair work. So if cleaner gets inside the buttons or inside of the switches, it's not going to be the end of the world because it'll definitely be running through this car. So if you want to get a barn find, uh, a good way is searching on Facebook Marketplace. The people that we work with specifically search for these cars and then they bring them to us because they sat for so long. A lot of it's word of mouth. So for these seats, they were covered in anything that the mice could put on them. So the first thing that we do is vacuum them and then we'll go ahead and extract them. So we use our extractor soap and then we'll use our drill brush to agitate the soap and really work it into those fibers. And then we'll use our extractor, which shoots hot water into the fibers and also sucks it away at the same time. So it's a vacuum, but it's a vacuum with water. The exterior of this car was covered in dust from front to back and then there was some wood chips and other stuff in the headlight crevice which I'm pretty sure on this kit there's supposed to be a headlight cover but for some reason they were missing on this specific car. And here we're vacuuming out some of the jams, which we like to do before we pressure wash off the car because if there's any wood chips or anything, it might scratch the paint. So on the wheels, they were covered with some sort of green substance, which I don't know if it was mold or not. And to clean this tire, we'll go ahead and pressure wash everything off of it first. And then we'll use our PNS brake buster on the tire and the rim. And then we'll use an assortment of brushes, usually soft bristle brushes and a tire brush, and then we'll pressure wash it all away. The paint on this car was in pretty good condition. The only thing that we noticed was deteriorating was the black paint. So what we're spraying on this car is a paint safe degreaser so we can loosen up all that dirt before we pressure wash it away. And what that's going to do is minimize any kind of swirl marks or scratches. Paint chips can be damaging to a car only because it can cause rust to form if there's metal underneath where the paint was. But there was no rust on this body at all because it's made out of fiberglass. So we're starting to film the car here using our pressure washer and foam cannon. And this is the part that a lot of people find the most satisfying in the whole process. And there's two reasons why people use foam cannons. The first one is as a pre-soak, so they can loosen up all the dirt that's on the surface of the car. But also, instead of just putting soap in a bucket, it helps you put soap over the entire car, which makes the process safer for the paint and easier. And after foaming the car, we'll use microfiber mitts on the entire car to wash it down. And now we're using our Rupes buffer to take any of the oxidation off the top layer of the paint, which will make it a lot shinier, less dull and give it that overall wow factor at the end. So this is just like a paint correction. And when it came to the black paint, we didn't even polish it at all because it was starting to come off of the car and we didn't want to ruin or take away any of that paint that was already there. There wasn't too much that we could personally do. It's something that would have to either be redone or just left as is. 
And after the whole car is cleaned and we're ready to do the finishing touches, we'll do a tire shine. And as that dries, it leaves the tires looking nice and matte black. And it just gives it that overall wow factor for the customer. And the absolute last thing we'll do is spray a ceramic sealant over the entire car. It'll protect the paint just a little bit, but it also give it a nice shine and just complete the detail. And that's it. I was super happy with the way that this car turned out. I actually personally want to buy it myself. We'll see how that goes in the near future when it's done being fixed up. When it comes to cleaning barn finds, if I can give any advice, it's just to take your time and really do your research. That way you don't make any super detrimental mistakes because the last thing you want to do is find something that has original paint or an original interior and damage it but also have fun with the process. Next up, this car has seen better days as 22 years of mold is deep cleaned. Hi, my name is Brent DeCesar. I'm one half of WD Detailing, and today we're gonna to be cleaning a really moldy Buick Riata that sat outside for over 22 years. The owner took me into his backyard, and as soon as I saw this one specifically, I knew we had to do it. When we opened the doors, the first thing that we found was a ton of mold and what looks like a mouse nest beginning to form at some point. All in all, this car smelled absolutely horrendous, and it was just disgusting. So the first thing that we're doing is working on the engine bay and that means getting rid of all of the leaves and anything that piled up over the years in the jam of the bay. After that, we went ahead and we used a pressure washer and some degreaser on it. And after we finished the engine bay, we moved on to the wheels. So when cleaning the wheels, the first thing we'll do is pressure wash them off just to get a cleaner surface. And then we'll spray our wheel and tire cleaner on them and use a couple different brushes to get into the wheel crevices and on the face of the rim and then behind the rim and in the barrel. And after that, we'll spray everything away, leaving a really clean wheel. Now we're getting ready to pressure wash and clean the outside of the car. We wanted to use our paint safe degreaser first to loosen up all that mold and grime before we actually took a pressure washer to the surface. And then we started pressure washing, which is by far the most satisfying part of any detail that we do. So our process with pressure washing, we always like to try to work from top to bottom. So the first thing we did was the roof. So we went to the hood after that, and then the sides, and then the rear. Just watching the pressure washer go in straight lines, taking away those years of grime just feels so good inside. I can't even explain it. And then after having all of that pressure washed off, we'll go ahead and spray the entire car down with our foam cannon. So here we're using the foam cannon and the reason for that is because after pressure washing the car, there is still grime and dirt left on the surface of the paint. And the foam cannon really just helps add more soap to the paint than putting soap in a bucket would. And when you're washing the car off with microfiber mitts, it makes it easier to do and quicker. After we wash it off, we spray the ceramic spray just to give it some protection before moving on to the interior. So in our first round of vacuuming, we knew that this car was really bad, so we weren't gonna get everything. So we definitely were gonna need to use the drill brush and extractor later on. This area looks like mice made a nest and they were both leaving their droppings behind and also bringing some food or different materials from the inside of the car that they could find. We were able to vacuum that up and actually get it pretty clean. So when we work on doors that have leather or vinyl or anything like that, we're pretty much using the same process, especially when they're covered in mold. The first thing we'll do is use TriClean, which is a cleaner that kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. And then we'll use soft bristle brushes and sometimes a steamer from a distance just to kill the bacteria and kill the mold. 
and then we'll wipe it away. And we'll spend a decent amount of time on each section of the car to make sure that we really get it clean before moving on to the next one. We repeat the process with the steamer and the tri-clean throughout the entire interior, including the steering wheel, which was covered in a very thick layer of mold, worse than any steering wheel we've ever seen. So what we're using is the Tornador and that's pressurized air and it's using it to dry it off and also blow out any product that could be in the cracks or anything like that. Older leather can definitely be tougher to work with because if mold sits on it for a long time, it can damage it, it can remove the dye. And you also have to be really careful with the steamer because if you spend too much time in one area or you get too close, it can definitely damage it. And after we clean the interior components, we'll go ahead and focus on the carpets. And the first thing we'll do is spray our extractor soap into the carpet and we'll get it wet. And then we'll use the drill brush to agitate it into the fibers of the carpet to help release any stains or any dirt that's in there. And then we'll use the extractor to suck that all away. And after the interior is completely clean with the leather and the vinyl, anything like that, we'll go ahead and use a leather conditioner. That way it can bring back the softness and the suppleness, but it also leaves it with a nice shine. And then some of the final things that we do to the car is cleaning the windows. And we add a tire shine to give the car those finishing touches so when the owner actually sees it, it gives that wow factor. All in all, this detail probably took us around 12 hours over the course of one day. And just looking over the final result of the car, we couldn't have been happier with the way it turned out. Even though there was some damage to the exterior with the paint, everything else absolutely was fantastic. Andreas Jurich from Workshop Rebuild shares how he uses a laser to remove years of rust from this old car. Hi, my name is Andreas Jurich. On social media, I go by Workshop Rebuild, and today I'll be sharing with you guys the laser cleaning process, and I'll be cleaning 40 years of rust on a classic Renault Le Car from 1979. Laser cleaning is a process where a laser beam gets emitted from a laser cleaning machine, and this handheld device will always be pointed towards a metal surface with any surface contaminants. Um, if you have uh, parts that come in that are just full of grease, full of oil, just full of uh, any surface contamination, you can actually use this laser cleaning process to remove all of that. Looking at the Renault R5 Le Car, the bodywork is still very straight, but around the edges, it does have some rust, and especially on the underside or around the wheel wells, you will see quite a bit of rust, and I would like to remove that so I can bring this car back to running conditions and also make it somehow suitable for the road. The first step is just really uh, visually looking at everything. It's really important to know where the rust is building up and which direction it's going in to actually address it with the laser cleaner. The next step is actually just to prepare the laser cleaning machine. Uh, once I have all the settings set up, I will put on my protective gear so I will be wearing a mask and I will be wearing laser protective glasses just to be safe. After that, I grab the handheld gun and I get to work. And I started off with the wheels. I'm taking away quite a bit of rust and that's been built up for over 40 years, right? So the most outer parts of the car I wanted to clean first and I was going to work my way in. That was just my thought process, can be in any other um, order, but that's just the way I do things. After the wheels were clean, I did the fenders themselves. Right around the fenders it rusts because you have all the time water splashing up on the fender. And that's where it will rust because the water actually doesn't evaporate or go away. Once I was done with the fenders, I moved in to the wheel hubs. It cleaned up the rust very well. I was really surprised that it cleaned up everything. It cleaned up the threads on the hubs themselves. So how does laser cleaning actually work? 
So the laser cleaning machine has a certain frequency. Once this frequency is established within the laser source, that will be emitted through the handheld gun. Once it's pointed at your workpiece, it will resonate with the contamination on top of the metal surface. The metal surface is the last resort that will not absorb any light. So everything above the metal surface will actually absorb the light of the laser cleaning machine. Uh, once it uh, touches anything above the metal, uh, the heat will actually remove the contamination on top of the metal. Other than that, if it's not the pressure or the heat, uh, the laser beam itself will vaporize the substance on top, right? So it's either or, right? And that happens within milliseconds, nanoseconds. So with any laser cleaning machine, um, this is a beam of light and it also creates a lot of heat. You can damage the surface substrate, which is the metal. Um, so you always wanna keep your tool or your handheld gun in motion. Uh, you do not wanna keep it uh, too long at one certain area or on one spot because you can damage the metal uh, if you keep it on one spot for too long. Uh, once I finished up with uh, wheel hubs, I actually moved on to the muffler that was on the other side. There are exactly four settings on this machine that I can manipulate. So the first setting is power, the second setting is frequency, the third setting is the speed of the laser beam itself, and the fourth setting is the width of the laser beam. So with all these settings, I can uh, vary or adjust the laser beam. So if I'm cleaning aluminum, I will bring the settings a little bit down because aluminum is softer and it also has a lower melting temperature. For steel, I go up in the settings and uh, usually I run them at around 80% and aluminum I run at 60%. I really noticed uh, along the body panels, I have to be very delicate. I had to bring down the values a little bit because that metal is so thin, I just had to keep it in movement all the time. And lastly, I ended up around the engine where some components were already missing, but I obviously cleaned up the inside of the engine so you can see the before and after on all four cylinders. Uh, the cylinders cleaned up very well. The cylinder head, the intake manifold, and the exhaust manifold were removed from the car previously so I could clean them up on the bench and cleaning them up on the bench actually gives me the opportunity to clean them all the way around which makes it super easy and the final finish also shows that it's a much better way to clean them on the bench. What's really nice about it is that you do not damage the substrate, which is the metal surface. So if you're working on machined areas, like internal components for an engine, uh, anything around any bodywork for a very, very delicate restoration project, or even something historical, you do not want to damage that substrate. So that's where laser cleaning comes in. So the technology behind laser cleaning is evolving very fast. A lot of companies or manufacturers are starting to hook these up to robots and to uh, their production lines. Even after something is manufactured in any industry, there is still some residue, uh, debris, or something that has to be removed for a further process. So when I look at the final result of this car um, from front to back or outside to in, um, I'm really happy and satisfied with the finish. Uh, the body panels cleaned up very well. I removed all the paint, it removed all the primer, it even removed some of the rust that was actually even chipping away. And towards the front of the engine where I have aluminum parts, it just cleaned that perfect without any issues and without any thermal damage. Um, I was really happy with everything and now I can continue on with my rebuild process. Since this technology is really new, um, I'm still learning as I'm going. So uh, I don't, I'm not a true professional just yet, but I'm learning every day. I'm really into this new technology and I can't wait for this technology to get better in the near future. Dreis Nation takes it one step further with the latest detailing technology, dry ice. Uh, Scott Ailes with Dreis Nation. So today I'd like to show you the step-by-step -step process that we go through in dry ice cleaning. So there's a number of things that are unique about dry ice cleaning. Number one, we're not using water. So when we're done, we're not cleaning up water spots. And we're not trying to dry things. If you can see the dirt, we can clean it. So there's a lot of places where you might be able to see that dirt, but you can't physically get to it with any tools or brushes or devices. And, you know, we can. We can clean that in the deep recesses of your car that you might not have been able to before. It's like when the car rolled off the factory line, you've cleaned it back to that condition. 
So when we're just getting started, we're trying to identify the method of what we're going to attack first. When we put a car in the lift, we always want to make sure and pull the wheels off so we can inspect the inner wheel house area. We use a torque wrench to break the lug nuts loose. We also like to consider, depending on the customer, if they want us to remove the inner wheelhouse liners, which are typically plastic, to see if they want us to clean behind there. So once we have the car in the lift and we're prepped, we're, we're then moving our attention toward the compressed air system to make sure that we've got all of our drying and cleaning systems for the air system in order, and then we're gonna load the machine with the dry ice so that we're prepared to, to blast. And so the first thing we try to do is get the wheels out of the way. We have four wheels and we'll just take those one at a time. You know, we'll look for tar, we'll look for adhesion uh, remnants from old wheel weights, which are totally a pain to remove and we make that pretty easy. Uh, and then we just, we'll clean the wheels inside and out. The three settings are, you've got pressure, which is PSI that you're all familiar with. There's pounds per minute, and then you've got size of particle. So those are the three things that you can adjust. But for the first time, we can actually choose the size of the particle. So it enables us to be able to do delicate things in the same area of things that might be aggressive. Uh, previously, you were putting those delicate items at risk with the large particle size. When we're starting the project, we're always looking for the dirtiest area first. We like to get the hard stuff out of the way so that when we get to those surfaces or those coatings that we're trying to remove that are easy, then it makes everything go smoother because you're not double cleaning. So you'll notice as I'm cleaning that the gun is never static. It's always moving. It's always constantly moving. And the reason for that is we have the risk of a concentrated 109 negative degrees on a particular substrate or part of the car that you could damage in one spot. So I'd like to take a minute and explain how this actually works. There's really three things that are occurring. You've got kinetic energy, which is driven by the PSI of the air system. You've got cold temperature, 109 degree negative, that causes things to shrink so they lose adhesion. And then you've got the actual thermal expansion of a solid chemical going to a gas. So that's 800 times its original solid size. Those three things work very well together to remove this dirt in a way that you've probably never seen before. There's a lot of technique opportunity here, right? Because in a sense, this is this is a bit of a, an artist's effort at an industrial job, if you will. I've found it to be helpful for me to function in a circular pattern so that I never have any hard lines. The, the circular pattern gives me the control that I feel comfortable with. There's really nothing that's more fun in this process than doing bare aluminum. You really can't hurt bare aluminum. And so in that case, you can crank it up. It's more efficient. You feel better about it. And, and it's, it's very satisfying to the eye. So once we've removed those really difficult, grimy uh, surfaces, uh, we, we do move into a combination of handwork and fine detail dry ice cleaning people presume that what we're doing is a magic wand and we just wave it once and we're done. And that's not true. When we have surface rust, uh, we do integrate an, uh, a fair amount of handwork, whether it be all-purpose cleaners, white erasers, OSFO, four-aught steel wool. Uh, definitely, we, we do use handwork. At the point in time that we, we believe we're finished with the underside, we'll bring the car down three or four feet and then we'll look at the top of the suspension and the wheelhouse areas. And then we'll notice, okay, we got some more work to do here. So once we've cleaned the underside of the car, we bring the car down on the lift and we have an extra wide lift so that we can open the doors, get the floor mats out. We can do the interior vents, the door jams, the engine bay, the trim, and, and we don't abrade the surface. And we'll do what takes somebody two hours in 10 minutes. So we were fortunate enough to receive this 55 Porsche Speedster, and it literally is a barn find. What you're seeing here is me trying to see if I can remove this crazy thick mold that's 30, 40 years old off 60-year-old vinyl. That mold was so thick, it would stop your fingernail. This was a big moment for us, and the end result is 
we will apply some all-purpose cleaner at the end and we'll wipe off the final film from this panel, but it just turns out spectacular. So we don't add to or remove any CO2 from the environment, so we're neutral. And we don't use water, which means that we don't rinse chemicals down a drain into any sewer systems or into drain fields. So from an environmental standpoint, by far, it is absolutely a better cleaning solution than using water and chemicals. The dry ice cleaning world could be considered the highest level OCD crowd. Think about the underside of a car and the intricacies of every component. There's a lot of surface area to all of these parts and pieces. Don't think that it's going to be easy, but the satisfaction factor for those that care about the way their assets or their artifacts look is at the highest level. So it's, it's worth the energy. Gabe Tyler from GT Detailing takes us behind the scenes of reviving this cough filled with trash. The detail started by removing the stained seats and floor mats. Gabe evaluates whether the seats need to be removed depending on any stains under the seat and between the center console. Once the floor was exposed, Gabe separated the trash and customers' personal belongings using his hand to remove the bigger items and a vacuum to clean up any leftover trash. He cleaned the door jams with a degreaser and brush, followed by a power washer to remove any dirt or gunk. This step is done early in the detailing process and before shampooing in case water sprays on the carpet. A vacuum removed as much dirt and junk as possible from around the car, including the floor, seats, and under the spare tire cover. After vacuuming, Gabe started the chemical cleaning process, working from the top down to avoid double cleaning due to chemicals and soap dripping down. To remove stains on the headliner, he used a spray, drill brush, and a microfiber towel. He deep cleaned the floor mats with a pressure washer and shampoo and then hung them to dry. To restore the seats, Gabe used a steam cleaner, dry brush, and extractor to remove any stains. He prefers to use McCulloch steamers because there are multiple attachments to choose from. Moving to the carpet, Gabe sprayed a carpet cleaner and used an agitator to bring any hidden dirt to the surface, sucking it up with a mighty extractor. He steam cleaned the steering wheel and pedals with a brush attachment. Steam cleaners help remelt dried melted gunk like candy and chocolate for an easier removal. He treated the door panels with a vacuum, spray, steam cleaner, and microfiber towel. For plastic surfaces, Gabe works in small sections to ensure he doesn't miss any spots. Once the plastic surfaces were clean, he applied a plastic UV protector. Gabe reinstalled the seats and floor mats into the car and cleaned the glass, and the detailing was complete. Larry Casilla shares the importance of keeping your car clean and how to prevent water damage from leaks. Hey, I'm Larry Casilla from AmmoNYC.com. We manufacture car cleaning supplies. Today, I'm gonna to show you the step-by-step -step process for cleaning one of the most disgusting cars I've ever worked on. Right off the bat, I'm saying there's a water leak somewhere. There's obviously mice. This particular case, it smelled so bad. There's urine from mice in there. This is kind of the next level where you're cleaning it just to make it so that you can safely operate the vehicle. On cases like this, when there's lots of mold, lots of junk, I increase the water temperature as much as the power washer can handle, and that'll increase the cleaning ability. When you hit it with water, it's gonna indicate where there might be a leak. There's seals, what they call rails or rain guards or rain rails. If those get packed or compacted with, you can see in the door jams, muck and gunk and grime and leaves, it, it actually backs up and overflows and then flows into the vehicle. The debris in the door jams were 100% the cause 
uh, for the water, basically the water pools on the bottom underneath the carpet. I use a, a tiny little brush to kind of get in there. The idea is to lift the, a lot of the door seals and get underneath the door seals because if they're not perfectly flush, again, that whole rain issue as the door closes and if there's leaves and junk in there, uh, it just won't seal properly. So in terms of buffing or restoring the paint, this mission was to use a microfiber cutting pad. I used a, a compound. And what that microfiber pad does is it kind of tickles the surface of the paint, so to speak, and it removes a lot of the stuff that just didn't come out with a wash. And if it's embedded in the pores of the paint, just like a blackhead, so to speak, I have to go in there and just remove all that, exfoliate it. As the, the vibration, or what we call oscillation of the machine, zzz, as it's buzzing, it's actually vibrating a lot of the dirt that's behind the, the headlights and the taillights and the, all these little pieces. So in this case, uh, I washed the car for a second time uh, after I, I buffed it. Then afterwards, you wanna protect it again. So in this case, we use a product called Ammo Reflex Pro, which is a type of coating. It's an antimicrobial, which is perfect for this car because obviously there's mold and bacteria all over the place. When it comes to headlights, as the sun is penetrating the headlight, it's just chewing up all the UV protection it has. And over time, it sort of just decays, right? It becomes dead skin on top. So what we need to do is remove that dead skin. Then you can go in just like the paint with a microfiber cutting pad, uh, an abrasive, uh, like a compound, use your pad, polish it up. And you can see within a minute or two, it'll rejuvenate that. Now you have to put the suntan lotion on. And in this case, you wanna re-clear coat it. With respect to windows, the best way that I found over the years, and this is an evolving process, is first you use a little bit of window cleaner, you spray it down, first thing is use a scrub pad. That scrub pad is gonna lift a lot of the oils and junk that are stuck to the glass over time. And so as you do that, it's still gonna be wet and kind of gross. You take uh, what we call towel number one, and you scoop up all of that uh, oily residue. It's not gonna look pretty at, that, at this point, and that's totally fine. So once it's kind of dry, then you go back in, lubricate again with a glass cleaner, and then use a squeegee, working top to bottom for obvious reasons. And then you go in with a separate towel, called number two towel, and you can wipe it down. Sometimes they call them glass towels. Then you can really go in and buff the edges. So it's this constant running after smears. When we're vacuuming the inside of the car, first thing you want to look at is the size of the debris that you're trying to vacuum up. And then first thing is sort of uh, vacuum up the big parts. Then I put in what's called a crevice tool. A crevice tool sort of looks like your hand. It's, it's very narrow. You remove a lot more debris that way because the, the orifice is much smaller, thus the, the lifting power uh, is, is much better. With respect to shampooing, you can use a scrub, uh, a red handle scrub brush, and they're $2 or whatever, they're everywhere. In this case, we use Ammo Shag, which is a cleaner just for uh, fibers, carpets, Alcantara, seats, that kind of thing. And then the goal is to agitate the junk to the surface and then wet vac it out. I thought I had already sucked up a lot of the poo and all that stuff, but as I was shampooing, you could actually see little bits of mouse poo in the shampoo machine, which is insane. That means mouse poo was not only on top of the surface, but underneath. So when you remove certain parts of the vehicle, like carpets or the rear trunks, uh, you can pull that out and shampoo it. That's way better because it's just compressed water shooting out all the junk. It's way better than just sitting there and going back and forth. But it makes sense. You can't do that to, let's say, the, the carpets underneath the seats. You're not going to do that. Okay, so to clean the interior, we use a couple of different tools. Uh, use ammo lather that is designed for plastic, leather, and vinyl. And then we use an interior scrub brush. It's really good for buttons and things. And then we use a scrub pad. Now the scrub pad basically takes that top layer of junk off before you come in with a microfiber towel. Then once you're all done and you're scrubbing, because what you're doing is you're agitating the dirt, it comes to the surface, what we call a lather, and then you scoop away that, that junk. Once everything is done, so you take compressed air, blow them out, and as the lather sort of squeaks out from underneath on the sides, just scoop it up with a microfiber towel, let it dry, assess the situation, and then you can go back in any spots you missed. The separation between a regular detail and an amazing detail is usually the last like three, four, five percent. So you have silver from the car, and then you have this kind of faded, whitish, gross, you know, material or trim. You want to you want to brighten that up. So I took the 
the pad and you know, applied mud. And again, it's to draw this contrast. Even if you're not a car person, even if you're not excited about washing your car, there is a level of cleanliness that actually translates into dollars, into uh, saving your investment in this case. You have to keep those, those seals clean at the very minimum, especially if you park outside.